Talk to us about uh, what you were doing on the East Coast and your racing and then coming over here and uh, being here full time. Yeah, so I started racing in the early 90s, uh, primarily just electric. Uh, just, you know, mainly doing just kind of regional, national stuff that was close to home, not really flying or traveling to a ton of stuff. But I was really fortunate in Savannah, Georgia, there they were hosting, able to host uh, a few nationals and then I was able to attend some of the nationals in Florida. And then after I graduated high school, I moved to Michigan to go to college and to work full time. I was still kind of doing the same thing, just racing because I loved it. I was passionate about it. And I was given the opportunity in towards the end of 99, early 2000, um, where I was given the opportunity to come move to California. And like you said, it's if you wanted to kind of take your racing to the next level or be serious, that was kind of the thing everyone did was you, you had to be here on the West Coast and yeah, pretty much the rest is history. Coming here, uh, the difference was more tracks, more opportunity and the ability to run multiple times per week. So, and um, talk to us about that a little bit and how you kind of picked a schedule and where you wanted to start uh, racing at that could kind of improve your skills. Yeah, it's totally true. So on the East Coast, we were dealing with weather all the time. So there would be local races scheduled every week, but a lot of times it would rain or the tracks would get kind of hammered. So you weren't always able to race every week where once I moved to California, you were racing multiple times a week. I mean, we would be at SoCal on Wednesdays, Fridays, and then I don't remember which day, but Saturday or Sunday. So for the most part, we were racing three times a week and there was also a lot more events to be able to attend. So yeah, you were able to pretty much progress your racing at a much faster pace living in California. Well, talk to us about the gas truck experience and everyone talks about gas trucks still, like it's the greatest class ever. Um, maybe, you know, give us a little bit of your input on that class. You know, you've had trucks named after you and a lot of success. So you know, talk to us about gas truck. Yeah, so the gas truck, it was kind of like, I think the class that no one, at least as far as the guys racing for Losi and working there, none of them wanted it to really be their project. Like everyone was into 10 scale, mainly 10 scale off-road, also some electric touring car. Um, and I had a little bit of success with gas truck, but I kind of fell into it and kind of, I guess, got lucky a little bit. And it again, it was class, other people didn't want to like work on or have to develop the class. So for me, I was young, eager. I was like, I'll do whatever it takes. Yeah. And it just so happened that gas truck ended up like booming. It became very, very popular for Losi. And then eventually, you know, the eight scale stuff started rolling and that's still going strong today. Yeah, I mean, you were really in a really kind of instrumental position at the time. You were running gas truck. You didn't you didn't run as much electric, although you know you did run some um, you know in the early 2000s still. Yeah. But you know you got into eight scale. Uh, Losi didn't have an eight scale. You ran the jam and car. You were a big yeah. part of that team. A lot of success with that. And then you're really involved in this big project, getting uh, the new Losi eight scale, the eight going, and keeping that going for a while. But what was it like? Uh, kind of in that period of time, kind of starting to run this this new car? Yeah, for me, it was just a super exciting learning curve because again, it was 
I had a little bit of Nitro experience, but it was all still kind of new to me, like learning all the, the engine tuning, the clutch, the geometry and setting up the vehicles that, you know, I was just like a kid in a candy store. It was just wanting to go the track all the time, run as much as possible, learn as much as possible. And it was, again, in a segment that was booming. So it, it made it that much more exciting because there was, you know, such a strong following for the eight scale market. And you guys got that, you know, that eight scale rolling, you know, and then the gas truck thing started to um, disappear a little bit. It became more about eight scale. And, um, and then, you know, the really your, you, you kind of shifted towards being more uh, of an eight scale racer. So maybe talk about that transition from having to go from a little electric, some gas truck to eight scale to kind of moving to more strictly eight scale. Yeah, so in the beginning, I was trying to do a little bit of everything. I was trying to still run 10 scale electric because that was like the popular class. I was trying to take the reins with the gas truck program and, and make that the best that it could be. And then we were also then introduced to uh, starting to dabble a little bit with eight scale. Like you said, I was originally racing and working with Jay Halsey at, at Jammin. And then eventually that transitioned into the eight. But yeah, it was kind of like I got to a point where I was trying to jump between all the different classes, which I think as like a racer only, that would be okay. But not when you're also trying to develop the platforms for all of those those different classes so I kind of fizzled out of the 10 scale and then just did gas truck and 8 scale and then as gas truck kind of started to die and the tracks were changing and stuff like that it's pretty much just been you know full uh, full 8 scale for, for quite a number of years now. then you got into um, you know really being known for being an engine guy you know you had many relationships with different types of engines and you would stay um, consistent with that uh, engine program for quite a while. People uh, that come to the races, they ask you to tune engines and how did you become known as the as the engine guy, I guess? I think a lot of that was mainly because Trinity switched engines, it seemed like, every other year or so. So I raced for Trinity and I would run and promote whichever engine they were the distributor for at the time and it seemed like that was kind of always changing. It was Pico or Novorossi or Top or all these different companies. So I was constantly having to figure out and learn for my own race program what each of the engines needed to be able to be consistent and have good power and runtime and things like that. So it was it was pretty frustrating at the time because you wanted to just you would get something really good and you would want to stick with it and, and continue to run that. And then Ernie would let me know, hey, by the way, you know, we're, we're no longer going to use Pico. Now we're going to use something else. So in hindsight, it ended up teaching me a lot. I was able to learn a lot about tuning and nitro engines. And yeah, I don't know. It wasn't something that I was necessarily like working towards or wanting to be. It just kind of worked out that way to where I got to where I had a pretty consistent engine program and my stuff was always super reliable and I think like especially in the early days with the low C8 like we had a vehicle that was quite a bit better than the other vehicles on the market and then I pretty much always had an opportunity to run an engine program that worked really good and that, that helped a lot with my success is just running products that were good, running products that I knew and I was able to kind of tune and tinker with to have consistent results. You know, we're still racing the same guys today, Cavalry, Mayfield, Tebow, all these guys. But I felt like in my early days of Nitro, like I was running better products. Like, so those guys, you know, today, they're still the guys you're battling with trying to beat. But now, today, everyone's running better products. We're all running pretty much OS-based uh, engines. Fuels are a little bit better. And then the vehicles are, are pretty similar. Where in my early days, you know, I'm racing against Ray Mayfield with a Reedy engine, which it was capable of winning, but three out of five times, it was gonna overheat and flame out or 
kill a plug or something like that. So that's part of, I think, what kind of people look at me as like the engine guru because I was able to run good products and and also help develop a lot of those uh, products along the way. So yeah, obviously that's one of the attractions for us is the ability to see you get out there uh, running a lot in these different tracks, different conditions. Um, you know, you're not, also you're known as a, as a tire guy, you know, yeah. you get out there and you do a lot of running, you decide what you like, what you don't like, and that trickles into the rest of the drivers, the rest of the team, and you know, you know, we're just kind of working working our way down your t-shirt you know i mean it's yeah. you got a lot of support here and um you know kind of what we're learning is that um you never just jumped into one of these things and decided to be the expert or the guru but it, what ends up happening is you you end up getting there because of the the track time the experience trying yeah. to do it for yourself and then people say then they start asking you what are you doing what do you like and help me get going Right. Yeah, I think people, you know, they trust, they know that I work super hard. They know yeah. that I'm not going to just throw a set of tires on and say, oh, it's good enough. Like if if I feel we can improve or and it doesn't necessarily always need to be like new products, but let's learn and be able to optimize what we've got, like the tools that we have mm -hmm. and use them, you know, to to be able to get the best results. So. Yeah, it's for sure a lot of people lean on me for different things. Um, and I think, again, a lot of it just comes down to some guys, they don't want to just go to the track and hammer out laps and put the wear and tear on their vehicles. But I love doing it. I love practicing. I love racing. I love learning. And yeah, so it's, it's going to be exciting to learn some new tires and compounds and be able to work with the guys and forge a, a really tight relationship. You, you roll around with the JBRL series, but you also do some of your own races, whether it's a Toys for Tots or whatever's going on that weekend. And um, all this running that you're doing, you know, people, sometimes they want to come and grab this information from you, but yeah. it's stuff that's happened from 1999, you know, to 2021. Uh, you know, you're in a situation where it's like, hey, this is stuff that I've been, you know, picking up on for 20 plus years here. and. You know, then you're offering that to people as a, as a way to go faster. Yeah, no, it's exciting. And I think that's why you see the following that you do um, with the products that I use is, again, people, they know that I'm out at the track. They know that I'm running all the time. And it makes it easy for them. If, if they're been super busy the last month working and they know that there's a race coming up at Thunder Alley and they haven't been here for a little while and they want to know what tires that they need for this event, you know, they'll shoot me an email or text me and I can get them up to speed pretty quick. We appreciate it, Adam, and we'll see you very soon here on the track. And uh, thanks again. Thank you. I appreciate it.